Hello and welcome to this lesson on complex numbers. I'm Mohamed Kadem Kari. The PDF of the lesson is available on the website I indicate here. The outline of the lesson will be firstly to define the set of complex numbers, then to uh, show you the different representations of complex numbers. After that, we will solve together equations in C. And finally, we will see how to represent point transformations with the help of complex numbers. We begin by defining the set of complex numbers. To this end, we begin with a reminder uh, um, recall that the equation x minus 1 equals 0 admits a solution in the set of integers n, which equals 0, 1, 2, etc. And the solution is x equals 1. So if we solve this equation, we get this solution here. On the other hand, the equation x plus 1 equals 0 does not admit a solution in n. And this led us to construct a set denoted z, which we call the set of relative integers. Um, so it comprises the set of integers and we add what we call the negative numbers. The set is larger than n and the advantage is that in this set, this equation here admits a solution which is x equals minus 1. The idea leading to the complex numbers is very similar. Indeed, the equation x squared minus 1 equals 0 admits two solutions in the set of real numbers, r, which are 1 and minus 1. On the other hand, the equation x squared plus 1 equals 0 does not admit a solution in r. So we construct a set, denoted C, larger than R, in which this equation here admits a solution. We will construct together this set in the next slide. Here is the mathematical construction of the set of complex numbers. Let I denote a number, which we call imaginary number, such that i squared equals minus 1. So this number is not real, it is imaginary. Then we define the set of complex numbers, denoted c, as the set of x plus i y, where x and y are real numbers. So this is the definition of the set c. But this definition is not enough we should also define the operations between numbers within the set. So addition between two complex numbers, z and z prime, is defined by this formula. We add the first parts, the x parts, together, and then plus i, and we add the y parts together. On the other hand, Multiplication is defined by this uh, more involved formula here, which will be justified in the next slide. Finally, we define the case of equality. Two complex numbers, z and z prime, are equal if and only if x equals x prime and y equals y prime. In particular, z equals zero if and only if x equals 0 and y equals 0. So keep in mind that in order to define the set of complex numbers, we firstly define the elements of this uh, set, which have the form indicated here. Then we define the operations on uh, complex numbers, in particular addition and multiplication. And finally, we define the case of 
equality of two complex numbers. Let's justify the formula of the product of two complex numbers. So, let's make the product z by uh, z prime, assuming that the multiplication is distributive with uh, respect to addition. So, we get these two terms here firstly, then the two other terms here. Now, using the fact that i squared equals minus 1, we can transform the last term like this, getting minus y, y prime, and finally, we get the expression of the multiplication of two complex numbers. So, the basic assumption to get this expression is that multiplication is distributive with respect to addition in the set of complex numbers. Now, from the definition of addition, we uh, can check that addition is commutative, which means that z plus z prime equals z prime plus z. Moreover, the addition is also associative, which means that we have this equality. Similar equalities hold also true for multiplication. So, multiplication is also commutative and associative within the set of complex numbers. Let's define some useful terms for complex numbers. Given a complex number z, which equals x plus i y, we call x the real part of z and denote it like this, r e of z. Moreover, we call y the imaginary part of z and denoted i m of z. So, observe that it is just y which is called the imaginary part of z and not i y. Fix this notation, please keep in mind this, uh, this notation. Now, we denote by z with a bar over it the complex number x minus i y and call it complex conjugate of z. Moreover, we denote by z with two bars here as the square root of x squared plus y squared and we call it modulus of z. Finally, if the real part of z equals zero, we say that z is purely imaginary. Keep in mind this terminology, purely imaginary, complex number means that the real part equals zero. Observe that when z equals zero, if and only if its modulus equals zero. Here are the basic properties of the complex conjugate and modulus of a complex number. Let z uh, belong to c, then we have the modulus of z equals the modulus of its complex conjugate. First important property. Moreover, the real part of z equals z plus its complex conjugate divided by 2. And the imaginary part of z equals z minus its complex conjugate divided by 2i. Observe these two differences here. Here we have an addition, whereas in the imaginary part we have a difference. And in the denominator here we have 2, whereas here in the bottom part of the uh, ratio we have 2i. The third property says that z multiplied by z bar, its complex conjugate, equals the modulus of z squared. This is also very useful. In particular, if we try to calculate 1 over z, using this property we can show that it equals the complex conjugate of z divided by the modulus of z squared for any z different from 0. This is also very useful, in particular when we calculate the ratio of two complex numbers. 
if we have to calculate z prime divided by z an interesting idea will be to multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator in both sides so we get in the bottom of the fraction modulus of z squared and in the above part of the fraction we get a complex number by making this operation so we get rid of the complex number in the denominator by multiplying by the conjugate this is a very useful technique to calculate the ratio of uh, two complex numbers let's apply this uh, method to calculate the ratio of uh, these two complex numbers here so the idea is to multiply by the complex conjugate of the denominator both sides of the fraction so uh, here in uh, this product we get the modulus of 1 plus i squared which gives the value 2 now for the numerator use the distributivity to calculate this product here finally we get 3 plus i divided by 2 which gives this form of the complex number which is the final form of the a complex number which is the ratio of these two numbers here are the basic properties of uh, complex conjugate and modulus uh, firstly for uh, two complex numbers z and z prime the uh, conjugate of the sum of z and z prime equals the conjugate of z plus the conjugate of z prime similarly for the product the complex conjugate of the product is the product of the conjugates again the conjugate of the ratio of two complex numbers equals also the ratio of their conjugates the modulus also of the product of two complex numbers equals the product of their uh, moduli finally we have the triangle inequality which, which says that the uh, modulus of the sum of two complex numbers is smaller or equal than the sum of their moduli. Complex numbers may be represented in different ways. Let's show these representations in the present section. Firstly, I show you the geometric representation. For any complex number z with uh, real part x and imaginary part y let's consider the point m with coordinates x and y so x is the abscissa and y is the ordinate we say in this case that the point m is the point associated to the complex number z and that z is the affix of the point m and we shall denote this in this way so this notation means that z is the affix of the point m we define also the affix of a vector as follows let m and m prime be two points in the plane with affixes z and z prime then we say that z prime minus z is the affix of the vector m m prime so observe that we begin with the affix of, the, uh, of m prime and then we uh, subtract the affix of the point m we shall use the same notation as we did for the points uh, by putting the affix of a vector just after the vector so this is the notation for the affix of a vector we shall now state a useful property here I will draw a figure to uh, make ideas more clear let the point M be a point with the affix Z and consider its symmetric M prime with respect to the abscissa in this case this point M prime has affix the complex conjugate of Z this is due to the fact that the complex conjugate is x minus i y and this point here precisely has 
coordinates x minus y. In a similar way, let's consider the point here, which is the symmetric of the point M with respect to the origin O. This point here has coordinates minus x minus y, so it has a fix minus z. So this is the second property I state here. Here is an application of uh, the fix of a vector. Consider four points A, B, C, D and denote that their uh, respective affixes uh, with uh, lowercase letters. Then A, B, C, D is a parallelogram if and only if the vector AB equals the vector DC and this is equivalent to say that the complex number B minus A, which is the effects of the vector AB, equals the complex number C minus D, which is the effects of the vector DC. In the same way, ABC is an equilateral triangle if and only if the distance AB equals the distance BC equals AC, and this is equivalent to say that the up the modulus of B minus A equals the modulus of B, C minus B, which equals also the modulus of C minus A. Another representation of a complex number is called trigonometric form. Let Z equal X plus IY be a complex number, and let M be the point associated to Z in the plane provided with an orthonormal uh, system L, U, V. We call argument of Z the angle between the vector U here in the abscissa and the vector OM. So the argument of the complex number Z is this angle denoted theta here and uh, denoted also arg of Z. Let's denote by R the modulus of the complex number Z. So this is R. Consider now the triangle OMA. In this triangle, if we try to calculate cosine of theta, we find that this cosine equals X, which is the abscissa of M, divided by R. So, we did use that x, the abscissa of m, is related to the modulus and the argument by the relation x equals r multiplied by cosine of theta. Keep in mind this very important relation. Similarly, if we calculate now the sine of theta, we find that the sine of theta equals y divided by r. So, y equals R divided by sine of theta. The following proposition summarizes the results obtained uh, so far. Let z equals x plus iy be a complex number, denote by r its modulus and by theta its argument. Then z equals r cosine of theta plus i r sine of theta, which is called the trigonometric form of the complex number Z. In other words, we have that the abscissa or the real part of Z equals R cosine of theta and the imaginary part of Z equals R sine of theta. The form Z equals X plus IY is called algebraic form of Z. To find the argument, or to retrieve the argument from this uh, uh, algebraic form of Z, we use the following relations. Cosine of theta equals x divided by the modulus, which equals the square root of x squared plus y squared. 
Similarly, sine of theta equals y divided by the square root of x squared plus y squared. Here are useful properties of the argument of a complex number. Firstly, the argument of minus z equals the argument of z plus pi. We may see this relation in this figure, so we represent z here with argument theta. And since minus z is this point here, or corresponds to this point here, so its argument will be theta plus pi here, since the angle here is precisely pi. Moreover, the argument of the conjugate of z equals minus the argument of z. We may also see this relation here in this figure, since the point corresponding to uh, the conjugate of z is this point, which is a symmetric of the point uh, corresponding to z with respect to the abscissa, and then its argument will be minus theta. The third property says that z equals z prime if and only if the modulus of z equals the modulus of z prime and the arguments are equal. So these three properties are uh, obvious uh, from geometric considerations. The, third, the fourth property here is a little bit more uh, difficult to see, but it is also very useful. The argument of the product of two complex numbers equals the sum of their arguments. So please keep in mind this very important property of the argument of a complex number. Similarly, the argument of the ratio of two complex numbers equals the difference of their arguments. The argument permits to calculate the angle between two arbitrary vectors. Consider four points in the plane, A, B, C, D, and their respective effects uh, with the same letters in uh, lower case. Then the angle between the vector A, B and the vector C, D may be uh, calculated as the argument of the complex number D minus C divided by B minus A. Uh, so this is a mnemonic device to remember this formula. Observe that the fixes appear in this uh, argument here in order from the right, from, uh, the right to the left. Uh, this means that we begin by uh, D here, then C, and then B, and finally A. So we take D minus D minus C divided by B minus A. So please Keep in mind this uh, uh, way to remember in which order the uh, affixes appear in this formula, in the reverse order of the letters uh, when writing the two uh, vectors indeed. Let's apply this uh, proposition for this example. Consider a triangle ABC. This triangle is a rectangle at A if and only if uh, the vector ABAC which equals the argument of c minus a divided b minus a equals pi over 2. And this is equivalent to say that the complex number c minus a divided b minus a is pure imaginary. So you see here how useful is this uh, property. It characterizes some geometric uh, properties in a very simple way. Another useful representation of complex numbers is called exponential form. It relies on the following proposition. Let f be a function from the set of real numbers to, set, to the set of complex numbers, associating to any theta the value cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. Then this function satisfies the following property. f of theta plus theta prime equals f of theta multiplied by f of theta prime. Observe that the sum here is transformed into a product. 
The detailed proof is given here. You may look at it on the PDF if you want. The interesting thing is that this relation is characteristic of exponential functions. So we may denote cosine of theta plus i sine of theta in the form exponential i of theta. This leads to the following definition. Let z be uh, any complex number different from zero. Denote r its modulus and theta its argument. Then z may be written in its uh, trigonometric form r cosine of theta plus i r sine of theta but it may also be written in the form r exponential i theta. And this is the exponential form of the complex number z. Here are interesting properties of exponential form. Firstly, the product of two exponentials equals the exponential of the sum. So, keep in mind that the product here is transformed into a sum. Moreover, the exponential of i theta divided by exponential i theta prime equals exponential theta minus theta prime. So when you have the ratio, you get a minus sign here. The third property says that exponential i theta to the power n equals exponential i n theta. This property is known as the Moivre formula. We have also Euler's formulas saying that cosine of theta equals exponential i theta plus exponential minus i theta divided by 2 and sine of theta equals exponential i theta minus exponential minus i theta divided by 2i. Keep in mind that there is an i term here and a minus sign when we consider the sine of theta. Finally, two complex numbers with their uh, exponential representations are equal if and only if the radii are equal and the arguments are equal. Here is an exercise where uh, the exponential form is very useful. We shall express cosine of 2 theta and sine of 2 theta in function of cosine theta and sine theta. So for this we use uh, the Moivre's formula which says that exponential i2 theta equals exponential i theta squared. Then the first term here equals cosine 2 theta plus i sine 2 theta and the second term here equals cosine theta plus i sine theta squared. So we calculate this uh, term here which equals cosine squared minus sine squared plus 2 cosine sine. And hence the cosine the 2 theta equals cosine squared minus sine squared. The real part of the left side equals the real part of the right hand side. Moreover, sine 2 theta equals the imaginary part which is 2 multiplied by cosine theta sine theta. So we get these two expressions here which answers to the exercise. I will show you now how to solve equations in the set of complex numbers. So consider firstly a second degree equation of the form a z squared plus b z plus c equals zero, where the unknown is z, which is a complex number. We assume moreover that i is a non-zero real number and b and c are real numbers. We define the discriminant by, uh, denoted by delta as b squared min minus 4 ac. So you take this term here b squared and then you uh, subtract 4ac. 
Then there are three cases uh, according to the value of this uh, discriminant. If the discriminant equals zero, the first case, then there is only one solution to our equation, which is z equal minus b divided by 2a. The second case, if delta is strictly positive, then there are two real solutions, which are, which are minus b minus square root of delta divided by 2a and minus b plus square root. Uh, square root of delta divided by 2a. Finally, if the discriminant is negative, then there are two complex solutions, which are minus b minus i square root of absolute value of delta divided by 2a, and the same similar term here, the second solution with the plus here uh, between these two terms in the place of the minus sign here. Okay, so uh, in the set of complex numbers, in all the cases there are some solutions. When uh, we uh, try to solve this equation in the set of real numbers, in the third case here we say that there is no solution to the equation in the set of real numbers. But there are two solutions in the set of complex numbers, which are given by these two expressions here. Now the difference between the, these two cases, by the presence of the i, term here, okay, and the fact that we take the square root of the absolute value of delta since delta is negative. Here is an equation where the exponential form will be very useful. Consider an equation in the form z to the power n equals a, where a is a complex number different from zero, and the unknown is z, some complex number. Uh, the idea is to write z in its exponential form and also a in the exponential form. Then our equation becomes r to the power n multiplied by exponential i n theta equals rho exponential i alpha. So uh, we get that the moduli are equal, so r to the power n equals rho, and the arguments also are equal n theta equals alpha plus k 2 pi. The first equation here gives r equal to the square root, the square of rho, um, the nth square of rho, and theta equals alpha divided by n plus k 2 pi divided by n, where k is within the set 0, 1 until n minus 1. So there are n solutions to this equation, and these solutions are given explicitly uh, by these two properties here. We have the modulus and we have the argument of each solution. Let's do together this exercise. We try to solve the equation z to the power 4 equals 16 i. So the idea is uh, to uh, write z in its exponential form and also do the same for 16i. Uh, to this end, we recognize that i equals exponential i pi over 2, and this may be justified by uh, the figure here. Uh, in mind that i is on the y-axis, and its argument equals pi over 2. So we get that r to the power 4 multiplied by exponential i for theta equals 16 exponential i pi over 2. So this leads to the fact that r to the power 4 equals 16 and fourth theta equals pi over 2 plus k 2 pi. Consequently, r equals 2 and theta equals pi over 8 plus k 2 pi over 4, for k equals 0, 1, 2, and 3. So, uh, taking these value, values of uh, k, we get the arguments, and this leads to the set of solutions which I show here. 
So these are the solutions of our equation. The last part of this lesson concerns point transformations. Consider a function f from the set of uh, complex numbers to itself, associating to each z some image which we denote z prime. Then we associate to this uh, application f a point transformation which we denote t of the plane towards itself which associates to the point m of fx z the point m prime with fx z prime. So this is an illustration here if the image of z by the function f if is z prime, so this is the application of the function f, so we uh, consider the transformation t this time which associate to the point m with fx z the point m prime with fx z prime. Here are some uh, examples. Consider firstly a translation with vector u uh, having fx u. Then uh, the image of a point m is a point m prime such that the vector m m prime equals u. So this may be uh, written in uh, with complex numbers by saying that z prime equals z plus u. Since the fx of m m prime is z prime minus z and this equals the fx of u which equals u. Okay, so we uh, put now z in the right side and we get z prime equals z plus u. Secondly, let's consider a uh, homotity with center capital omega with fx omega and ratio k. This is uh, characterized by uh, the vectorial relation omega m prime equals k omega m. So if we consider now fxs of these vectors, for this one we get z prime minus lowercase omega should be equal to k multiplied by the fx of omega m which is precisely z minus omega. So we get this relation uh, in the complex uh, plane or the complex representation of homotopy uh, in this uh, form here. Now consider rotation with center capital omega, with fx omega, and angle theta. Such rotation is characterized by the uh, system of equations here. The distance omega m prime should be equal to the distance omega m and the uh, angle between omega m and omega m prime should be equal to theta. And uh, this leads to uh, this equation here, since this first equality here may be written with the uh, fxs by saying that the modulus of z prime minus omega should be equal to the modulus between z minus omega. And this second relation here about the angle says that uh, the argument of z prime minus omega divided by z minus omega should be equal theta. And this leads to the relation we write here. Now, finally, for a symmetry uh, of axis, the abscissa, we have the characterization saying that uh, uh, L m prime should be equal to L m and the angle between uh, u which is the unitary vector of the uh, uh, abscissa axis the um, angle between u and L m prime should be equal to minus I can uh, minus the angle between u and L m prime so I put here m m prime and this is the vector u on the abscissa. So you see that for a 
symmetry we have the second relation here and this shows that z prime is indeed the complex conjugate of z so this is the complex representation of a symmetry with respect to the abscissa axis this ends uh, this lesson thank you for your uh, attention uh, see you in the next uh, lesson goodbye